Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ashwin and welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're going to be talking all about unions in C++. So a union is a little bit like a class type, like a struct type, except it can only occupy the memory of like one member at a time. What that means is that typically if we have a struct and we declare, let's just say, four floats or something in it, that means that we can have four times four bytes, which is a total of 16 bytes in that struct. That's how much space it occupies because we have four members and obviously as you keep adding more members to a class or a struct, the size keeps growing. A union can only have one member. So if I were, if, if I was to declare four floats like A, B, C, D, the size of the union would still be four bytes. And when I tried to address either A, like if I tried to change the value of A or B or C or D, that would literally be the same memory. So if I change A and set it to five, the value of D would also be five. That's how unions work. And you can use them exactly like you can use structs or classes, like you can add uh, like static functions to them and just normal functions and, mem and methods to them and all of that stuff. However, you can't like have virtual methods and there are some other restrictions, but usually what people use unions for is very kind of closely linked to type punning, which is what we did in the last, vi in the last video. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out right now. Um, but it's really useful for when you want to basically be able to either give two different names to the same variable. Like for example, if I had like a mathematical vector class, X, Y, Z, a VEC3, I might also want to address it as if it was a color RGB, right? X, Y, Z, RGB. How can I get it so that I can use it both ways? And basically, you know, X will align with R and G will align with, D with Y and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's all achievable through the use of a union. Um, so we'll take a look at some examples here. Uh, usually I would say that unions are used anonymously, which means you don't give them a name and you definitely don't have like methods or anything in them, even though they can have that if they're not anonymous. Uh, but overall unions are really, really useful. Um, and we'll just take a look at a few examples to see how we can use them. So I've got some code already written out here, but we'll get to that in a minute. If we just take a look at a basic example of a union, let's just say, let's just say that I'm going to write an anonymous union here. We write it the same way as we kind of do with a struct, like an anonymous struct, but it's called a union. And then I can give it two different variables. Let's just say I'll give it float A and then int B. So what this means is that uh, if this was a struct, we just have two different members. However, what we have here instead is two different ways to address the same memory, which means that if I was to say, put this into like a struct called, I don't know, union, this might confuse things, hopefully not. Um, and do something like this. If I was to make an instance of this union class and then set u.a to 2.0f or something like that, if I go ahead and print the value of u.a and u.b like this, f5, then you can see that what we get here is two and then one, zero, seven, blah, 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 because this value is the byte representation of two as a float if that makes sense. So it's as if we took that memory that made up the float and then just interpreted it as it was an int. So we've type punted basically. So that's what you can use unions for and that's what they are commonly used for. It's just a way of type punning. If I was to try and convert it into two different variable types or something like that, I could easily do that. So let's take a look at a more useful example. What I've got up here uh, is essentially a vector two and a vector four. Now I've also got a function called print vector two, which takes in a vector two and prints it. Now, at the moment, I can't print a vector four. However, you can see that a vector four is really just two vector twos, or at least that might be one way to look at it. I mean, it's got four floats, this has two floats. Why can't we just see this vector four as two vector twos? Well, what we could do if we wanted to, again, get the vector two out of, out of this thing, is we could do something like, you know, get, I don't know, we'll call the first part A and then the second part B. So the vector two A would be X and Y and B would be Z and W. We could do something like this where we construct a whole like vector two or something like that and then give it some members and return that whole thing. And we could do something like that. However, that's gonna create a whole new object and we don't really wanna do that. We could also type on our way into this by not having to copy anything. We still will need to copy something because we're creating a whole new type. But what we could do instead is just return a reference to a vector, which is really just a type punt version of X. So the way that we would do that is we would cast the memory address of X to a vector two like that, and then dereference it. So you get this, right? And that could be one way of doing that. But another way of doing that is by using a union. And that will probably look a lot better as well. 
So to do that, I'm just going to get rid of this function and then wrap this in a union. So a union, as we know, and I'll just get rid of the name because it's going to be an anonymous union. A union, as you know, can only have one member. So we can't just leave the float x, y, z, w like this, because that would mean that x, y, z, and w would both occupy that same four byte space. What we need to do is actually wrap this in an anonymous struct like this. So I'll just say struct. Uh, and then put that float x, y, z, w in there like that. So now this struct is is the one kind of member that the union has, which is which happens to be like a 16 byte structure. Now at this point, nothing's changed, right? If I go ahead and let's actually create a vector two, um, or rather I'll create a vector four, I'll just call it vector, um, and I'll set it equal to one, two, three, four. I can still access vector.x and whatever like normal, right? I can set this to like two or whatever. I can still access it as usual because like I haven't given this a name or anything like that. If I start doing that, it's going to ruin everything. But if it's an anonymous thing, it's just really just a way to kind of structure the data. It's not really adding anything. But again, the benefit here is that it's converting all of this into a single member, which is what the union expects. And finally, I'll make another struct here. So obviously this is adding a second member to the union, which means that it's going to occupy the same space as this first member. And that's going to consist of two vector twos, A and B, just like that, okay? So now I have a few ways of accessing this data inside vector four. I can either, I can either use X, Y, Z, W, or I can use A and B. And A will be the same memory as X and Y, and B will be the same memory as Z and W. So let's check out how that can work. So I've got one, two, three, four written down here. What I'll do is I'll print vector two, and I'll print vector dot A, okay? Just to get that result out. And then I'll set vector dot, well, I don't know, let's just say vector dot Z, I'll set equal to 500, and then I'll print vector two, but this time I'll print vector dot B. In fact, it probably might be useful to print uh, both of them both times, just for fun. Okay, um, and I'll also add a little bit of a divider, I guess, so that it's clear when we actually uh, modified the data inside our vector. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so check that out. We have one, two, three, four, as we would expect the first time, and then one, two, five hundred, four. So I haven't even touched the actual B part of that vector, obviously. I haven't set B dot X to 500. I've set vector dot Z to 500, which is actually this variable here. But this variable here corresponds to B dot X because it's, because it's occupying the same memory. Okay, so hopefully that's a pretty good example of how unions work. Again, they're really useful for when you want to do stuff like this, when you have multiple or when you want multiple ways to address that same data because it might be useful in a number of ways. Um, again, you could use type punning or something like this. Usually unions are much more readable. There can be some problems that come out of this, which we might talk about in another video, but I don't like talking about that kind of stuff because it's some of those are just like very unlikely to happen and you'll probably be fine. But, but anyway, hopefully that'll give you the confidence you need. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can, like, you can hit the like button and let me know. Um, Patreon.com forward slash the channel is the best way to support this series. Huge thank you as always to all the lovely patrons who made this possible. Leave any comments you have below um, about like unions, why you use them, why you might not want to use them or why, they, why they've been useful to you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.